Welcome to the I Love Winnipeg Real Estate Podcast, your premier resource for buying, owning, and investing in Winnipeg's real estate market. And now, here's your host, Adrian Schultz, who loves all things real estate, property management, and mortgage financing. All right. Well, I'm joined today by Al Keith of 1010 Kitchens and Contracting. I have a personal connection to uh, Al and his business. They actually did some work at our home, which we are uh, still in love with. And Al's got a, an interesting story that I'm uh, so happy he's going to be sharing with us today. But before we get into your story, Al, obviously, you're a self-employed guy. You work on real estate, uh, just the, the virtue of your business. How has the pandemic affected your business? The pandemic is strange but true. Our pandemic's been very good for our business. There's lots of people who have been sitting on real estate that is underimproved and that, you know, through the time they've spent staring at their walls and wishing it looked differently, they've decided to pick up the phone, give us a call, right, and make quality improvements to their homes. So it's it's actually like it's, I hate to admit it, but the pandemic's been interestingly enough like good for us. And uh, have you have you been able to uh, have the manpower and the resources to do the projects that have come as opportunities to your business? Yeah, there are definitely limitations on things like like manpower and how many people we can have in a project right at a time. And, uh, you know, we have to take all the safety precautions. The reality is that certain things are take more time to get right now than they would ordinarily. Business is not completely as usual, but it's a little bit slower in terms of how long it takes us to, to build, but it's moving along. So we're crossing our fingers and continuing to build beautiful kitchens for wonderful people. That's good to hear. I looked at your website this morning to re-familiarize myself with your business. And, you know, right on the front, there's uh, pictures of your, obviously your raving fans, people saying how they love their 1010 kitchens. So I couldn't be happier to have you on the call on the I Love Winnipeg Real Estate podcast. So let's talk about your story. You recently bought a new or perhaps old home. Tell us a little bit about the home that you bought. Yeah, we're excited. So, you know, this is a home that we plan to live in for at least uh, 10 years. So it is like our, our family's home. But we had been looking for a home that would suit our talents that we could move into, make some improvements to and potentially, you know, improve our financial position at the same time. And uh, we'd pretty much given up on that when Trudy Turner, our real estate agent, you know, introduced us to the home we're in now, right on Oxford. It's 105 years old. And it had been, I'm going to say, loved, but significantly underimproved, which means that the original doors, the original door handles, all the original character wood was here. So it had fabulous bones. And, you know, we, we loved it. And we, we did the math on it a few times and thought, you know, it's, it's just too much work. But when we, we looked at it, we decided, no, we, we love this. You know, we want this to, to be our home and we want to make it our own. And at the same time, we, we think at the end of the day, you know, we could potentially see a gain right from the money we, we put into it. So, you know, given that our podcast has the word love in it, let's get intimate for a minute. Could you, sure. could you tell me the purchase price of the home? Yeah, we bought this house for $455,000, which, you know, felt like a steal riddle for the fact that we bought a home that's over 4,000 square feet, right, on a very desirable street, right? We're in Oxford in uh, in River Heights between Kingsway and Academy. It's a great lot. We have a 60-foot lot, but maintenance has been limited in terms of, you know, things that have been done. And I think people were scared to, you know, to sort of get into it and, you know, so we, we, there's a lot of catch up to do, but the home was loved previously. And, you know, we, we love the, the history of the home. It's been owned by lawyers and judges since it was built. And it was built by a prominent Winnipegger 105 years ago. So we love the character of it. We absolutely fell in love with it, but we're scared by the size of the checks we'd be writing to improve it. But our story actually looks really good right now. So we're pleased like to find out that we're we're moving in the right direction with it, and we'll uh, we'll hopefully get into that in a bit. Now you said a uh, hundred and five. So was it built in 1915? 1914. 1914. Okay. Did you have any fears about buying this home, and perhaps you know were you aware of the risks that came with it? 
Yeah, like one of the issues that we find with old homes is that things typically cost more money than you you think they should, and that problems that you know look like an issue on the surface are frequently deeper. So you know we were scared about structural issues, and we we looked at it and you know made an assessment, had a home inspection. Like I'm I'm in the business, but I wanted to be sure I wasn't looking at this house with rose colored glasses, right? So we we brought in an outside expert recommended by Trudy Turner who uh, did a fabulous job of going through the home, gave us 55 pages of issues right with the home. Lots of them might like, small, but certainly some of them, you know, were, were absolutely significant. And what renovations did you make to the home? Well, initially we knew that we had to upgrade all of the electrical. It uh, had, you know, knob and tube uh, wiring throughout it. Some of it had been improved, some of it, you know, very well, and some of it you know, perhaps not as well. So it cost us about $40,000 to do the knob and tube. We initially got a quote for $25,000. But then, you know, when we did the, the major kitchen renovation with it, that added more electrical costs right to it. So, you know, the reality was that we got a very big bill and there was a bit of a surprise in the size of the, the electrical bill. But we've chased out every bit of knob and tube, which is, I understand, is a little bit exceptional. Like even though, like our insurance agent would have been happy you know, if we chased out about 90% of the knob and tube, but, you know, we, we managed to tear up everything, which left us with a home full of holes in the walls all over the place. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was like the first thing we knew we had to do to build back the base of the house to, that we wanted to build on top of. Now, you're a pretty calm guy. Did you and your family live in the home while all this was going on? Yeah, this was a significant burden. And, uh, you know, Barb, my wife, uh, still loves me, but there were times when I wasn't sure she she would. We literally plasticed off part of the house and lived and ate out of the like part of the living room uh, while the renovations were going on because we we tore out right the remains of of two sets of butler stairs that were in the home to expand the kitchen, and there was significant dust. This you know went on for a long time, and the, what Barb told me what she really wanted for Christmas last year was running water in the kitchen. <laughs> so we we got her her Christmas present, and Christmas was saved. But you know when we we got the kitchen working again, a, a life became a lot better in the home. But for a while there, with all the the baseline work with renovating, tearing out plaster and lath, ceilings that were falling down, structural work that needed to be done. There was a lot of dust. There was a lot of debris. There was definitely some tears, but we're very happy with what we've done. What other major things have you done to the home so far? The kitchen was the the big thing. Now we're we're in the business of interior renewal, so we do right homes, full insides, right basements, uh, kitchens. You know, we will do bathrooms and stuff, but we typically do them along with with kitchens. People regularly phone us and tell us, you know, they want to do like the whole inside, two bathrooms, the whole main floor, everything. So we did, we, you know, knew what we were in for, for with this house. And we knew when we built the kitchen, we wanted to build a stunning kitchen because we really like kitchens. Now it's hard for Barb and I to agree on what something will look like. And I think that we have this tension that comes out positively in the end because we challenge each other on what this can be. And so, you know, for months, like I drew pictures of what the kitchen should look like and Barb was doing the same thing. And at the end of the day, like we agreed on, you know, what we, we thought was what our opinion, you know, stunning kitchen that absolutely fit the character, right, of a 106-year-old home. And it's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. We've done some fabulous stonework. We challenged people to do their very best work on this. And we asked them with respect to like OG curbs on the edge of the, the stone and, you know, pattern layouts and things like that that they don't usually do. And at the end of the day, when they carried in the island slab of uh, granite, like it took six people and it, it weighs about, you know, 875 pounds because it's it's over two inches thick. So anyway, we think it fits the character of the home. You know, in my opinion, it's gorgeous. And the feedback we get from everybody who sees it is that the, the kitchen is, is stunning. Um, after all of the work that you did, did you tally it up and, and take a look at the bottom line, what you've spent so far? Um, I think we're fairly careful with that. And we were curious because we were putting more money into it than we were initially hoping to to put into things, but we sort of allowed for that right in the, the process. So yeah, we've we've kept a, a bit of a tally. 
But then like we, we looked at things and there's a certain level of uncertainty with the, you know, what's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided, you know what, we should get the home reappraised. We would like to continue to do improvements to it, but we want to be sure we're being smart with it. So we right phoned our friends at Cabernet Credit Union and they sent out an appraiser who, you know, reappraised like the home for us. And we're very pleased, you know, with what he came up with. He he did a very good job of going through the home. He also recognized the value of, of true character improvements, right? We paid $2,000 to have crown moldings and original baseboards remade, right, out of, out of real wood, right, for the home. Like we recognized when we bought the house that we thought there was a debt to the character in it that we needed to make sure things were maintained, the original integrity, right, of the home. So even while we opened up the kitchen and stuff significantly, we still wanted to maintain all the original moldings that like had been there. Nobody had molested them in, you know, 106 years or whatever. So, you know, we did that. And the guy who did the appraisal, like, recognized that, recognized that we'd, you know, taken design inspiration for the kitchen, right from the, the stunning fireplace mantle that we fell in love with. And we joke that we paid half a million dollars for it when we bought the house. This is all Trudy Turner's fault. We blame her for this. But uh, yeah, we, we love the house and we, we are delighted with how it's going. We love Winnipeg real estate. So you bought the home. You have made significant improvements to it. You had the home reappraised. What's your upside so far? How are things looking as to your equity growth or, or your win? Yeah, well, it's, it's come out really good, and we're we're delighted, as I said, like with it. So we paid four hundred and fifty-five thousand. We put, we think, one hundred and seventy-five thousand in, and then we recently had it appraised at seven hundred and ninety thousand, and so we we've, we've got a gain right currently of one hundred and sixty thousand, and the appraiser went further than that, and said that with the improvements like we're looking at, we've still got right? Two bathrooms, like we want to renovate. And yeah, that he thinks that there's a further $200,000 just based on the market today. Now, did you and your wife do all the work yourselves or was, uh, you know, good portions of it outsourced? Certainly the, like the plumbing and electrical was outsourced. And and I have like people who I work with, right? Who came in and did things like painting. And we had to work this out with our accountant as to, to how it actually this would would work, and uh, yeah, no. That, so that's part of what what I've put in. But you know, like I may be underestimating how much sweat equity I personally put into the home, right? In uh, in working on it, like it's not unusual that on Saturday afternoon, right, I'll pick up my tools and like do four hours worth of uh, work, right, on the the house, checking off things off of the original list of to dos. But you got Barb her running water for Christmas. Yeah, so I'm, apparently I never have to buy her anything for Christmas ever again. And based on what you've told me, uh, $160,000 in equity growth along with running water, I think that's a pretty big annual gift. How long did this go over? What's the time frame? You know, it, it, our timeline is slightly screwy because of the pandemic, but um, this really is, you know, almost a year and a half that it took us to to reach right this point. But the reality is that when COVID struck, we had a moratorium on spending on the house. So we literally decided until we really knew what was, was happening that we would not spend more money on the, the house. So we we did that for a while. Yeah, so things got parked for a little bit. And then when we, we realized that the business was good, we were deemed essential and moving forward, subsequently, we, we've just been so busy that it's difficult to get a spare day with, with somebody like some of the fabulous craftsmen we work with to uh, to come into our house and do a little bit of work. So based on your experience of what you've done with your own home, obviously you provide some or many of these services that you provided to yourself to others through your business 1010 Kitchens. Can you tell me a little bit more about your business and perhaps what makes your company different from others that are also in the kitchen and contracting business? Sure. We love our business. Uh, we started this business about uh, 14 years ago, and we put a lot of thought right into uh, initially it was just just me. My wife, Barb, right, was added to it at some point after we started. But we we love the idea of improving things that, you know, we, we love real estate and, you know, we love the fact that we can take something, right, that, you know, a kitchen that's, you know, well past its best before date 
and turn it into a, a home that's stunning. The, you know, that is the backdrops for like people's lives that it absolutely right improves like people's life, not just their, their home. So we regularly, you know, we're in there, right. When demo starts and you see what the kitchen, what the home looks like before. And then as we're walking out the door, you know, I exaggerate this only slightly, but we can sometimes like be in tears because we've loved this home. We've invested in this home. You know, we have fabulous Red Seal carpenters and Red Seal cabinet makers, right, who work on homes. We hire people who are, right, top 5% of their trade. And that at the end of the day, with the work that they've done, you know, we, we're leaving people with these stunningly beautiful homes that absolutely improve every day of their lives. I'll tell you a story quickly about my, my last home, right, that when I used to get up in the middle of the night, I'd walk by the kitchen, right, on the way to the bathroom. And, you know, I used to get up in the middle of the night, do my business. And I'd think every time I walk by, that's an absolutely fabulous kitchen, right? And it just injected me with pride and uh, appreciation for the, the work that I do. And that, you know, it, it made like, having a beautiful home improves your life, not just your real estate equity. And I think in Winnipeg, you know, we, we can absolutely do both. You can improve your life, build the space you want to live in, and, you know, see a fabulous return on it because it's not just the 7%. We've seen people have stunning returns. You know, we've seen uh, about three homes in the last couple of years, you know, where we've d redone their interior and the return on it. I couldn't tell you dollar for dollar what it is, but what I get back from the homeowners is that their returns have been exceptional. I can speak to that uh, from from personal experience. When you did the work at our home, you did the kitchen, you did a, a bath, and, and and some other significant improvements. And I know, you know, even for insurance purposes, when it was appraised, our wins were unbelievable. So I think it just echoes what you're describing. That yeah, you can invest in your home, which improves uh, your family, you know, your your life. And because we're in Winnipeg, you know, grow that equity in that home. So I think you, you answered my next question of why you love Winnipeg real estate right there. Uh, you've summed up wonderfully. I guess what I'm curious about is, you know, no matter how beautiful a home is, why does everyone always end up in the kitchen? You know, it's a fabulous thing. And it wasn't always this way. Like we're told that, you know, mother slaved away in the kitchen and people didn't want to see her or whatever. But now... It's absolutely the heart of the home that people want to live in there. People want to, you know, the kids come home from school and they want to put their laptop up on the island, right? Plug into a USB port and start doing their, their homework. You know, they want to hang out there. You go to a party, right? The best part of the party is always right in the kitchen. So, you know, it, it provides a giant social return to improve your kitchen, right? As well as a significant economic return. So, yeah, I think the best parties are in, in kitchens. And in Winnipeg, I think the, the returns particularly because I think our real estate is typically underimproved, that the opportunity for giant upside and uh, financial social improvement is huge. So I love what we do. What's 1010? 1010? 1010. We were looking for a name for the business and uh, we had, you know, it on our mind. We were doing business under like it's Al Keith contracting for a while. We were walking around and coincidentally, it's, it's Washington, which has been in the news. Uh, recently, and uh, we were literally walking around the mall, not far from the the Capitol building, and we came across a building that was named the Ten Ten Something Building. It wasn't uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, but it was just around the corner from Pennsylvania Avenue. And we put it in our head that all the connotations off of Ten are are excellent, and we we have a business that does excellent work. So uh, we thought it was at the same time unique and brandable and common. So people would know what it was, but recognize that it is a little bit different than just calling it 10 or something like that. So anyway, we like our name and that we think that we believe in the values that it instills, build beautiful kitchens for wonderful people. Great way to end. How do people get in touch with you, Al? Most people find us through Facebook, right? We're on Instagram, right, as well too, and certainly uh, House. And uh, you can call Barb directly at 955 nine seven one six for the most part people don't want to talk to me they do want to talk to barb she'll help them uh, get started come out visit with you determine what it is that you want to do also jillian hansel is an interior designer right who works right with barb and you know is a dynamic duo give them a call and uh, they'll come out and take a look at what you want to do and build you something that will make 
us proud and you proud. Al, congratulations on your acquisition, on the work that you did and on your equity growth. I think that uh, equity growth hopefully will benefit you and your family. And I'm very grateful that you uh, took the time to uh, answer some very personal questions that I think will be of benefit to many Winnipeg homeowners. So thank you, Al. Thanks, Adrian. Greatly. We're a big fan of yours and, you know, delighted to have the opportunity to uh, speak with you today. Uh, Best wishes to you and your family. And yeah, keep loving Winnipeg real estate because it's fabulous. Thanks, Al. We'll chat with you soon. Thanks for listening to the I Love Winnipeg Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe and give us a rating, which will help us reach more listeners. Until next time, connect with us on social media and online at ilovewinnipegrealestate.ca. 